it's been one of those weeks. <laughs> um, you know, yesterday, I know you might not know this, but I rely on a screen to help me with cheat notes. And I can't see that screen without my glasses. So yesterday, I lost the arm. <laughs> The arm broke off my glasses, and I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to show you my brokenness this morning and show you how much I need God because I can't even keep my glasses together. And I'm notorious, as my husband would readily admit, for things going wrong with my glasses. I'm just, I need to be more careful with them. And I always think, oh, I should, have, I should buy two pairs of glasses to have a spare one, but then I'm too cheap. <laughs> when I'm there, I'm like, oh, I could spend that money on something else. But maybe God's telling me something here. It's a good thing to have a backup, right? So, so we need God. We need him. So let's just pray just a quick prayer. God, we need you. And we pray in our time together today, Lord, as we dig into your word, Lord, that we would just allow you to help us see how much we need you. And God, that we would let you do the changes in us that we need to allow, that we cooperate with the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives, and we wouldn't put up barriers of defense but trust that you're doing good things in us. So Lord, would your word, which can sometimes cut a little deep and be a little sharp, do its work in us today because we know it's not to harm us, Lord, but to heal us. So may we listen and cooperate with your healing touch in our lives today. Amen. Amen. So today we are talking about God renewing all things. So I thought... He can renew my glasses. You know, grow an extra arm <laughs> would be nice. But <laughs> the truth is, is we all live in a broken world. And we all have sometimes walking around without an arm on our glasses. But when things are broken, they need to be renewed. Right? And that's what today's sermon is going to be about. So I'm assuming most of you here, and maybe not all, I don't want to assume everybody, but most of you here have probably seen a movie trailer. You know, it gives you the most exciting, funny, and noteworthy parts of the movie. And they're made to meant to draw us in so that we want to go see that movie. They showcase the movie. It gives us a taste of what that movie is going to be about. And the book of Isaiah, we've called it God's eye view because it gives us his view of the world and his vision for us of what's to come. So it does offer us valuable insights into the values that we should hold, believe, and live out right now. But it gives us something way more important than that because it shows us a future a future that will never end. And one that's on, it's unfolding, it's enlarging. And it's so much better than what we have now. It gives us a taste of what is to come so that we want to experience it now in part and look forward to experiencing it in full in the future. Now, while movie trailers don't always live up to their hype, let's be honest, I've seen some movie trailers and think, oh, this is going to be a great movie, and then you're like, ooh, like the best parts were in the trailer, <laughs> and then the rest of it was like, nah, you know. <laughs> but the taste of the future that we're given in God's kingdom will more than live up to its hype. Because unlike movie trailers, which sometimes showcase the best part of the movie, the rest can often be a flop. But Isaiah showcases God's good plan, the gospel of good news, and it's just a small taste of how great it's going to be. 
he is going to come back and renew the heavens and the earth. Now the picture we're given in Isaiah includes instruction and hope for Israel who was in exile that would show partial fulfillment but it also includes a picture for the whole heavens and the whole earth. The good news is that all things will be renewed. We're going to read Isaiah 65, 17 to 18. And God explains this here. He says, for I will create new heavens and a new earth. The past events will not be remembered or come to mind. Then be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I will create Jerusalem to be a joy and its people to be a delight. These blessings were experienced to some extent to those who returned from exile. However, most of the blessings were only partially realized. Jesus reaffirmed that it's the Father's will to restore the heavens and the earth. And throughout the series, we've also heard that God's justice demands judgment. But judgment shows us why it's such good news. Isaiah 65, 12 continues with this judgment theme. It says, I will destine you for the sword, and all of you will fall in the slaughter. For I called, but you did not answer. I spoke, but you did not listen. You did evil in my sight, and you chose to do what displeases me. Like we referred to last week, God is a righteous God, and part of his righteous plan demands justice. But the good news is, is he has offered us a solution. Jesus. Jesus died to pay the price for our sin, to take on our death penalty when we accept him as our Lord and Savior. But the truth is, if we can't accept him, if we can't admit we need him, then there's going to be judgment for our sins. John 5, 28 to 29 says, Do not be amazed at this, because a time is coming when all who are in their graves will hear his voice and come out. Those who have done good things to the resurrection of life. But to those who have done wicked things to the resurrection of condemnation. The good news though is Christ came as a light in the darkness. So that everyone who believes in him will, will be brought into the light. John 12, 46 says, I have come as a light into the world so that everyone who believes in me would not remain in the darkness. But God gives us a choice to choose to allow him to pay the price for us or to think we're good enough to get off with our own good works. And sadly, because of that, some are never going to. The Bible does say there's going to be some who will refuse to be saved because they don't want to admit that they need Jesus. But we have good news. Christ hasn't returned yet because he's giving time. Giving time to let God speak to others through us. And give them the opportunity to know that there is good news. And we are called to share this good news now. To be a delight to others as God makes all things new. Isaiah 65, 17 is the culmination of those plans. 
a future hope that God's plan is to create a new heaven and a new earth and the things that cause sin, the things that cause pain and suffering and death will be destroyed once and for all. He gives us these beautiful poetic images that whet our appetite for what is coming. And the implications of this verse are staggering. Such simple words. But when we think about it, the whole created order is going to be renewed. And this passage builds on other passages. You can read Isaiah 11, 1 to 9, or Isaiah 24. As the title of this sermon says, you haven't seen anything yet. The best is truly yet to come. And that's where our hope is. We haven't seen anything yet. That's exciting. Because not only will the former sorrows be gone, but everything in the old order, which had been dimmed and diminished by the infection of human sin, will be completely renewed. The minds of the renewed, redeemed participants will be so renewed that they'll forget the brokenness of this fallen world. They will enjoy this renewed creation with fresh eyes and renewed minds. And it is going to last forever. Sometimes when we think of eternity, we think of it in terms of today. And some of us are like, oh, I don't know if I want to live forever. Well, of course not. Not in our brokenness. None of us want to. Can you imagine how wrinkled we'd be? But anyways. <laughs> But think about it. Weeping, sorrow will be gone. There will be no more funerals. The power of death will be gone. Revelation 21 verses 1 to 5 also paints a beautiful picture and gives us a glimpse into this future. It says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I also saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared like a bride adorned for her husband. And then I heard a loud voice from the throne, look! God's dwelling is with humanity. They will be his peoples. And God himself will be with them and will be their God. God himself will be with us and he will be our God. He will wipe away every tear from your eyes. Death will be no more. Grief, crying, and pain will be no more because the previous things have passed away. Then the one seated on the throne said, Look, I am making everything new. And he said, write these words down because they're faithful and true. In the grace and the comfort believers have in and from Christ, we are to look with hope to the new heaven and the new earth. with delight that the former confusions, the sins, the miseries of our human race will no longer be remembered. And it's then 
that will enjoy the fullness of God's benefits. Spiritually and physically, we'll have bodies that won't fade away. And Isaiah 65, verses 17 to 25, is a continual reminder of our heritage in Jesus Christ. Think about it. The brokenness of this world brought on by the fall will be obliterated. Yes, amen. This is good news. We cheer over our Toronto Maple Leafs, maybe not so much lately, but, you know, we could be cheering because this is good news. This is a, God's not going to fail us like our Maple Leafs tend to do, okay? But the time is coming when there's going to be no more death, no more sorrow, no more pain. Because sin and evil, which have led to this fallen world, is going to be defeated once and for all. And that's the good news that we have. And that's the good news we've been called to bring to others. To show them how we are being made new now in part as a foretaste of what this total renewal is going to look like. And it's not told so we can gloat. Oh, look at me. I'm a renewed person. It's a gift. It has nothing to do with us. We're all sinners in need of a savior. But when we see, when we understand and God opens our eyes... It's not given us to gloat about it. It's given to us to share it with others. We are called to share this good news now. So don't be a show off. Be a showcase. Be a delight as God makes all things new. Because we are being made new now in part. And then we are going to be made fully new. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Yes, the old has passed away and see, the new has come. When we accept Jesus our Lord and Savior, we are being renewed. We start the process of renewal. We're transformed more into God's image day by day. 2 Corinthians 4, 16 to 17 says, Therefore, because of this, because of this good news, we don't give up. We don't get discouraged Because even though our outer person is being destroyed, our inner person is being renewed day by day. And our momentary light afflictions, all the trials we go through in this life, every bad thing that's happened is producing in us an absolutely incomparable eternal weight of glory. Our bodies are being destroyed by the fallenness of this world. We age. Some of you young people might think, well, not so. But wait, it'll happen to you too. We get diseases. We get sick. But when we accept Christ, our inner being is being renewed day by day. It's not decaying. It's growing. The struggles and trials that we go through, which are either brought on by the fallenness of this world, and that happens a lot, but sometimes they're brought on by our own fallen nature. You know, we forget who we are in Christ and we allow sin to get a foothold. And it causes suffering and pain in our lives. But they're only temporary And the thing is, if we suffer well, if we let the pain make us better instead of bitter, if we let it make us turn to God instead of away from God, 
it will produce in us godly character. It's going to make us more Christ-like, which will make us more delightful. Yes. You know, it's often said that God will not waste a hurt. But I think a more accurate thing is to say, God will not waste a hurt if we allow him to make us better instead of bitter through it. If we're bitter, we're wasting the hurt. Because bitterness, resentment, and anger will never showcase God's love. Think about it. It's not a delight to be around someone who's bitter or angry or resentful. You know, we're not like, oh joy, I want to spend time with that person. It's not a delight to be around someone who thinks they're better than you. And we need to remember that when we're talking to people that aren't Christians. You're not better than them. And they don't need to make you think that you're coming across, I know all these things and you need to follow them. The Holy Spirit convicts, but we love people. And we show them that we are a delight. Because it's not a delight to be around someone who's a show-off. A person, who ooh, look at them, look at me. Yeah, right? We are being renewed now as first fruits to show the world what it looks like to be made new in Christ, to let our lights shine so that they see the difference that coming out of the darkness into the light makes. It's like we're mini movie trailers of the total renewal yet to come. So if you think about it this week, how can I be a mini movie trailer? for God we ask God and we're given new eyes thank you Lord if I had new eyes I wouldn't need these broken glasses but and we see things we realize that the commands he give us, gives us aren't fences to keep us in they're guardrails to protect us from the harm that happens when we think we need to go over them it's like we put babies in play pens, right? And we're not doing it to harm them. We're doing it because they're at a certain age, they get into everything, and you need to put them in the play pen so that you can get something done and let them play where you know they're gonna be safe. And often our little ones don't enjoy it when we put restrictions on them, right? Just like we don't like it when God tells us we can't do something. My little grandson is a year and a half old, and he has got to the stage where he wants to walk and he doesn't want to hold your hand. But we've told him there's certain situations where he has to hold our hand for his own safety. And occasionally, he decides he doesn't want to do that, and he reacts by throwing himself on the ground and, well, throwing a tantrum. But sometimes we throw tantrums too. Or like, God, I don't want you to tell me what to do. I want to tell you how it is, and then you can bless me. But as we mature in Christ, as he opens our eyes, we begin to see that he's put them there for our good because he doesn't want us to hurt ourselves and harm our souls. And the more mature we get in Christ, the more we understand that. We understand that God's giving these to us to keep us from getting trapped and imprisoned by sin. So how do we respond? Once we're given this new perspective, it's not for us to gloat about. Remember, it's to share. But we need to share this through our words and our actions. Isaiah 65, 18, remember it said, Be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating, for I will create Jerusalem to be a joy and its people to be a delight. How are we to respond to the news of the renewing of the heavens and earth? Well, this verse tells us we are to be glad and rejoice 
That's where our joy comes from. And we are to be a delight. We rejoice because death was never God's intention. Romans 6.23 makes it clear that death is a result of sin. We rejoice because the gift of grace that we've been given in Christ's sacrifice means eternal life for us, a renewed eternal life. And we rejoice because Jesus paid the death penalty for us so that we can share in this. John eleven twenty five 25 to 26 says, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me, even if he dies, will live. Everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Christ has begun to renew us as he will one day renew the heavens and the earth. Does that make you long for God to create something new in you that will make others long for this creation? We're called first fruits of this new creation. Are you letting God renew you from the inside out? So you can showcase the new creation to others. Sanctification, which is a Christian word that some people are like, what's that? The easy thing is it's just being made new. We're being made new. And it's an ongoing process. We need to actively allow God to renew us day by day. To help us to stop walking as we did when we lived in the flesh and to walk by the power of the Holy Spirit in step with the Spirit. Being made new is not to show how great we are, but how great our God is. It gives us a testimony of his greatness to share with others and showcase him. So don't be a show-off. Be a showcase of God's love. We are to be a delight as God makes all things new. The question is, and it's a hard one, are you a delight? Does God's love shine through you to others? Do your words speak life or death to people? These are hard questions. When was the last time you encouraged or complimented someone? Or do you always grumble and complain or point out the negative and say, that's just the way I am? Mm -mm. That's the way you were. You're being made new and there's no room for grumps. So we need to get rid of that grumpy attitude. <laughs> Are you looking for ways to lift other people up or to pull them down? Because the truth is in God's kingdom, we never lift ourselves up by pulling others down. Are we looking to praise others or are we looking for praise from others? When we don't understand that we can love others from being fully loved by God, we look for affirmation in them and we want their praise. But when we're living from love, we can be an outflow of praise that spreads to others. Ask yourself, when people see you, do they walk up to you or do they try and hide from you? If you're always negative, that could be what they do. And don't be afraid to ask people around you if you're a delight. I know, it's like, whew, what am I going to hear? But the truth is, all of us are in the process of being made new. So all of us have areas where we're just not so delightful. 
And we're very good at hiding those areas from ourselves and thinking we're fine. But if we really want God to make us more delightful, we value the truth rather than deceiving ourselves. Because remember Romans 8 verses 1, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. It's not to condemn us. God wants to point these things out to us so he can make us better. So we can be that delightful person. And when an area revealed is revealed to you that you're not so delightful, ask God to help you make one small change toward renewal and give you the strength and the encouragement and power by the Holy Spirit to implement that change consistently and intentionally every single day. Jeremy Albrecht said, one small change carried out intentionally and consistently over time will result in big change. Think about if you walk just two kilometers a day every day, which maybe be a lot for some people and some other people are like, whew, I could do much more than that. But like two kilometers every day, if you did that every day for a year, you would walk 730 kilometers in a year, which is the equivalent of walking 17 marathons in a year. Now, if you set out and thought, hmm, I'm going to walk 17 marathons this year you would probably be, well, unless you're like my husband, who is like exercise man, you would think, well, that's kind of daunting, right? Like, whew, that's too overwhelming. But if you just walk two kilometers a day, it's doable. Let me share with you an example of how you can do that in your spiritual life to help you be more delightful. If you struggle with negativity, practice an attitude of gratitude. Every day before you go to sleep, think of one thing that you can be grateful for in your day. Because most of us remember the one thing that went bad and forget all the 10 thing, good things that happened, right? That's our human nature. But if you do that consistently over the next few months, you're gonna find that you become less negative and more grateful. And you start noticing things that you can be grateful about. Because you're allowing God to transform and change your mind as you cooperate with him, he changes you from the inside out. Or make it a habit of saying something encouraging to someone every day. Think about it. At the end of the year, you will have encouraged 365 people. But not only that, if you speak life into someone else by encouraging them, they're more likely to go and encourage someone else. And it multiplies. That's how we be delightful. And we're going to spend some time thinking about this at the end of the service. But first, where do you start? You know, how do I become a delight? Well, we're made new. The starting point is accepting Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Asking him to help us to be renewed from the inside out so we can taste and see what the kingdom is like and be a taste to the world of what it's like. Worship team, could you please come back up and help me? When we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior... We begin this new life of renewal in him. Our minds are transformed as we study God's word. The Holy Spirit gives us understanding and power to change. And if you're here today or you're listening online and you want to be made new in Christ, I'm going to encourage you to accept him as your Lord and Savior. And you can pray this simple prayer we're going to pray in a few minutes. But the truth is we all need to pray this prayer. Because we're all in the process of renewal. So I'm going to encourage us all to pray this prayer today. So that God will renew us continually and change us from the inside out. So I'm going to ask you to repeat after me. Dear God... 
thank you for your promise of renewal. Please forgive me of my sins. I accept Jesus' sacrifice to pay the price for my sins. Help me to turn to you daily to be renewed in Christ. So I can showcase this renewal to those around me. Help me to be a delight. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Let's praise God that he has such good news that we can be renewed to showcase into the world that full renewal is coming soon. We are but a glimpse into what is soon to come in full. But we're a better glimpse, a better mini-movie trailer when we are delightful to others. Like a movie trailer, we are given a glimpse of what the movie will be like in Isaiah. And we are called to be a movie trailer by being a delight. We are a glimpse into what God's kingdom will look like when it comes in full. Think of the trailer heading. Coming soon, God's total renewal. And if you've just started that journey today, if you just accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we'd love you to fill out a Connect card. You can go to connect.mystone.ca or you can fill out one in the chair in front of you and bring it to Welcome Central. And we want to do that because we want to send you material, free material, to help you get started on your walk with Jesus. And we also want to remind you, our grow nights are all about learning how to let Christ renew us with his word. We meet Tuesdays here at 7, we start with a meal, but then you're given a choice to go to Alpha, Next Steps, or a discipleship group. And if you're just exploring or new to faith, Alpha is a great first step to take to learn how to showcase this renewed life in Christ to others. Next Steps will take you a step further and show you how to let God's Word transform you through reading God's Word, prayer, and spiritual disciplines so that you can be a delight. And then the Way Discipleship Group shows you how to be renewed so you can actively help others find renewal in Christ as you disciple them. So we encourage you to come. You can check it out at events.mystone.ca and all the details are there. You can sign up from there or you can just show up too. The truth is, we haven't seen anything yet the book of Isaiah gives us this beautiful God's eye view of his plan. But we only see it partly now. We don't fully grasp how awesome it is going to be. 1 Corinthians 13, 12 says, We only see a reflection as if in a mirror. But then we shall see face to face. Right now we know in part, but then we shall know fully even as you're fully known so as we close this service I want you to reflect and ask God if you're using his gift of grace to be a show off or a showcase ask him to help you to be a delight because he's making all things new including you and honestly, ask him to show you where you are not a delight. He can't heal you, and he knows anyways. He fully knows you. It's not a surprise to him, like, oh my goodness, you're doing that? No, he knows. 
So ask him to help you know. Ask him to expose any pride, any arrogance, any anger, any bitterness, any tendency to gossip, jealousy, and self-pity. These things need to be exposed so God can renew you. Ask him to show you, Lord, where am I not speaking life into people? Where might I have a critical spirit, Lord? I want to be a delight, right? We want to be a delight. We want to showcase God well. We don't want people to think, oh, I never want to be a Christian. Look at that. That's what a Christian is. Of course not. And sometimes we've done a bad job. But we are new creations in Christ who have been and are in the process of being renewed day by day. And people should see that in us. And it's our job to cooperate with him, to choose to make one small change today. As you pray, ask God, Lord, help me to commit to make one small change today and help me to carry out consistently and intentionally so that I, in months from now, people will think, oh, look at, they've grown. There's such a delight in that area. That is what we need. This is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful promise. It's the best good news ever. Nothing can compare to the good news in Christ. And yet sometimes we act like it's kind of bad news. And sometimes we forget how good it is and we don't let it do the deep work in us that we need to. Lord, God, today, Lord, let us take a stand and let us say, Lord, we want to be a delight. Father, show us the ways that we're not being delightful. And Lord, it's not to shame us because Satan is the enemy and he wants us to be stuck in shame. So we're afraid to bring out and expose the things in us that you want to expose. Not to hurt us or harm us, but to make us better. To make us lights that don't just shine dimly or we can barely see, Lord, because we're so wrapped up in ourselves and so wrapped up in these things, Lord, that the enemy has sent to take away the power of the church. But Lord, when we all commit to that one thing, that one thing, it doesn't have to be overwhelming. Lord, that we would just all commit to let you change one thing in us this year. That we would consistently and intentionally practice that one thing and allow you to change and transform us from the inside out, Lord, so that a year from now we are a brighter church. Lord, that our individual lights shine brighter. Lord, that our corporate light shines brighter. That we would represent you well. That people would look at us and say they are a delight. And I want to be like that. I want a life that's renewed in Christ that looks like that. Father, help us to get over ourselves and allow you full access to change us so we can be the people that you've called us to be, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.